Hello there, uh, fellow pilots. This is Sebastian of uh, Touchdown Online Pilot Logbook. Um, I'm currently in the process of making uh, Touchdown available in a uh, lighter version for Sim Pilots 2. And uh, since the online simmers community has given me a lot of information, a lot of examples about home cockpits, I thought I'd just give something back by uh, telling you about um, the cockpit that I've made for myself. Um, I have uh, currently uh, quite a simple setup. I have uh, just one computer, one screen, uh, the Cytex X52 Pro joystick, uh, and then a, a custom overhead panel, which you can see here with uh, working LEDs. Now, this overhead panel uh, is made for the uh, Boeing 767 of uh, level D. That's the one you can see on the screen uh, right now. And it is hooked to my computer with uh, the uh, cards, the interface cards of Leo Bodnar. Uh, I currently use two cards and uh, I also use uh, a uh, hacked um, keyboard, a keyboard for the uh, simple key uh, switches like uh, the, the simple um, how do you call it, simple key switches, like this one, uh, where you only have just a momentary uh, action. Uh, this is something else with the, with the other switches where you can put them in the on position and then you keep sending a uh, signal to the computer, so that's not good with a keyboard because you keep sending the same key to the computer and then if you use another program, um, it will just type the letter uh, that corresponds to the key that you're pressing uh, but like for these momentary switches uh, it is uh, possible to do that with uh, a hacked keyboard uh, you'll find many many examples on the net of uh, keyboards that have been hacked and how you have to do that it's, it's actually quite simple it just takes some time um, but compared to uh, the interface cards of Leo Bodner and open cockpits it is uh, a very cheap solution to achieve um, the same uh, the same result, uh, the overhead panel that I have is a uh, very simplified version of the real Boeing 767 panel. Um, I've designed it completely uh, myself, and it's simplified. Why is it simplified? Well, just because I use the Leo Bodner cards, I can only establish a one-way communication with uh, my computer, so the computer cannot send back any data to my uh, LEDs, for example. Um, just to give you a concrete example of what this uh, what this means, uh, for example, the um, air conditioning uh, panel. I have this one switch that actually uh, activates the two switches in uh, the cockpit of my Level D Boeing 767. So if I shut down this one, then the complete air conditioning is down in uh, in the sim, and this one is just to activate uh, the LED. But since you will probably always use both switches at the same time uh, then <laughs> I couldn't actually care less that this one is, act is actually the one that is connected to the sim and this one is just uh, connected to some power uh, to some power source to activate the LED. Uh, same goes for the window heat switches uh, this one activates the four switches in the sim uh, and uh, this one activates two LEDs this one also activates two LEDs and this one is just a dubby one. So now in the sim it's actually the same situation as with this, except that on my overhead panel it makes a difference. Um, these are all uh, single pole, single throw switches, uh, but for some switches I used double pole, double throw switches, like for the emergency lights, because this one uh, is flipping over the switch in the sim and is also uh, uh, used to uh, to command this LED like this the LED is uh, now off and in the sim the emergency lights are also off so that's why you need uh, double pole double throw switches for for this kind of uh, of, of things um, I also have a small EFIS panel right here um, as you can see the sticker is coming apart uh, with one rotary encoder and then also a double pole, double throw switch, um, so that I can have double action on my uh, encoder. Uh, one to change the range of uh, what I see on the screen, and another one to change the type. So VOR, ILS, um, plan, that kind of things. 
Now, this is what I had found on the internet as a, a solution, so as to not to have to use uh, two encoders. But I uh, discourage you to do it, because uh, what happens when you turn your encoder, sometimes this keeps sending a, a signal to, to the SIM. Um, the Leo Bodnar card interface, or FSU IPC, I don't know which one of the two, uh, blocks this uh, this signal when it continues to send it just sends one time the signal and then it blocks it but if you flip over the other switch then it reactivates uh, the signal that, that comes from the encoder so you flip the switch and then you already see that uh, for example your range changes so if you are on type you change your type this one s continues to send the signal sometimes but nothing happens because FUSU IPC is blocking it then you flip over uh, the switch to change the range, but then FSU IPC or the Leo Bodnar card, I don't know which one of the two, um, detects that there is also a signal coming from this one, and so not only you change the choice of the two, but you also already change the action. So uh, if I ever have to build something similar again, then I will probably use just uh, or two uh, encoders or the uh, dual concentric encoder that you can find on Leo Bodnar's uh, website. And then I have some simple push buttons to, to change uh, what I want to see on my EFIS panel, like the airports or the, the VORs or the waypoints. Uh, I have two small um, loudspeakers with a subwoofer, as you can see here. Uh, the subwoofer is very nice, especially when you want to, uh, to use general aviation aircraft, uh, because the, the sound that comes out of there is, is, is very nice. And I also have the CH uh, Pro pedals, which do very well but I'd like to have them more no, to give me more resistance uh, um, I want really to, to have to push hard on the pedals but uh, the pedals actually well you can you can see there's no resistance at all or almost no resistance at all so that's actually uh, a, a bad side of the CH Pro pedals um, as for the rest as I have told you I use the uh, Cytec X52 Pro um, joystick, which is a very good joystick because it allows you to command a lot of things like the radios, uh, the, the comps and the navs, uh, ADF, your transponder and also uh, your, your autopilot. This is very useful um, because if you want to uh, make hardware radios or if you want to buy hardware, hardware radios, it's a hard word for me, sorry, I'm not an English native, um, then it's going to cost you a lot of money. So this is good for me, um, as for now. And also, there's a lot of buttons and axes that you can uh, uh, that you can uh, program in FSX or Xplane or FSU IBC. Uh, so that makes it a, a very useful piece of hardware. Um, you can see that I have drilled a couple of holes here. Um, my plan was a couple of months ago to make a rudimentary uh, autopilot uh, command panel. Um, so I've started drilling some holes, I, I made a test and it turned out that it was harder than, than I thought and then it needed some more investigation time and I didn't have the time and then I just dropped the plan but I already had the holes. Uh, I could co cover it up uh, with uh, another piece of MDF but I'm not going to do that now because this whole panel is uh, is coming apart. I'm going to uh, to get rid of it. I'm going to make a uh, general aviation panel with multiple screens uh, and also a couple of hardware uh, switches. Um, I'm going to hook up this screen to my laptop computer to show my uh, my instruments, and I'm going to put a uh, piece of MDF in front of it with holes drilled in it to uh, to show the instruments. And then I'm going to uh, buy three new screens, hook them to my uh, desktop computer for the view. Um, I still have to make the plans, but that's the that's what I intend to do. Uh, and then I still have to buy the, the the screens and then also the probably the triple head to go or another graphics car graphic card that allows me to uh, run multiple screens on one computer. Um, why am I getting rid getting rid of this one? Well. Flying the heavies is fun, but uh, I have enrolled in a uh, real-world flight school. I'm now a student pilot uh, for PPL, and uh, this makes it uh, 
it, it, it's actually actually better for me to have a general aviation uh, home cockpit, uh, so I can uh, train on navigation, on aircraft systems, uh, and stuff like that at home. Uh, because once you're up in the air, your uh, courses are very expensive. But if there are things that you can learn uh, here on the ground, then uh, that's good because your uh, your real training actually goes faster. You need less hours, and uh, it's less expensive. Uh, I'll keep you posted on the uh, updates of my uh, general aviation cockpit. So uh, be sure to make sure to to come back to my channel or su subscribe to my channel. There will be. Uh, new videos uh, coming up soon, uh, apart from my uh, cockpit videos uh, of my training flights, uh, which you can see. You can see my first solo or other instruction flights. Most of them are in uh, Dutch, because that's my uh, mother tongue. Um, but uh, you can uh, easily follow the radio, because uh, ATC sound is recorded, and, uh, and follow what is being said on, um, on the radio. So uh, that's it for now. I think I didn't forget anything. Um, thanks for watching and uh, I'll keep you posted.